Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. So let's talk about how Vogon Poetry, my 150 gram overhead saw robot, did at ARC's June meet. Now, before we get started, I did do a slight upgrade to Vogon Poetry. I found some 72 mil grinder discs, and I thought I might as well give those a shot. And I put one of those on going to the competition. However, my first fight is up against Shrapnel, a very nasty horizontal spinner. So at the event, having just seen the layout of the fights, I very, very quickly changed back to my metal saw blade because I knew that a grinder disc was just going to shatter into a million pieces if I let Shrapnel hit it. Oh boy, that was a rough first fight for the both of us. This was actually the first fight of the day and it was big. Uh, so Shrapnel obviously did a ton of damage there to Vogon Poetry. A lot of damage along the front plate, which again is kind of like 2 mil HTPE. So it actually, it took the damage pretty well, but there's a lot more grooves and gashes in it now than there was before. And I probably should replace this uh, moving into the next event. Also completely mangled up the arms on the dustpan. But again, those are 2 mil HTPE. So there was just a little bit of bending back that needed to happen at the event. And that was actually good to go. He also managed to destroy one of the ribs of the actual dustpan itself and knock off all of my acetate, which did come into play for the next couple of uh, fights because I didn't get a chance to fix that for a little while. Uh, on top of that though, or outside of that, there wasn't a huge amount of damage extra to, uh, to Vogon Poetry. He did get a wheel at one point, which was annoying. Uh, and did manage to put a decent mark in the chassis in doing so, but thankfully the chassis held up and didn't crack or anything, which I've had in the past, and I was a little worried it would it did happen in this case, but thankfully we, uh, we managed to avoid that. I put some really, really nice slashes into the top of him, as you can see here. I was at one point trying to cut all the way through his mounts that hold his weapon on, but never actually managed to quite get there. I did manage to get a power wire inside, uh, but it kind of like, there was just enough of that wire still together that everything was okay. But once he uh, pulled the whole robot apart and changed the battery, he couldn't actually get it going for the next fight. So there was a little bit of work that had to be done 
uh, to get Shrapnel up and running again for this fight. And uh, obviously we won that one by getting him in the pit. But yeah, that was a very dicey fight. There was a lot of damage going back and forth, but it was very enjoyable. I really quite liked that fight. Also, obviously that uh, point where he took the wheel off, the actual hub, came separate from the tire. I had the tire glued on, so I don't know how exactly this happened, but those two things separated and the tire jammed around his weapon, which was basically how we were able to get him into the pit and not take all that much more damage after that point. Having said that, we had taken enough in that fight anyway. Next fight up is up against a robot called Slipstream, and this is an interesting robot. It is a cheese wedge made out of aluminium sheeting, uh, and it is Fast, just very, very fast. <laughs> As you can see, I had put the grinder disc on for this particular fight, and oh boy, did that make my life interesting. Uh, that grinder disc is so large and so heavy that I was getting gyroscopic forces off the robot. For the first time since I ran This Is A Party, I was dealing with gyroscopic forces, which was weird. There was a couple of times where I was turning, and I was like, why am I not turning as far and as fast as I want to? And then I was like, ah, it's gyroscopic forces. Okay, this is fun. This is going to be interesting. And of course, a couple of times where I like ramped up him and the gyroscopic forces stopped the robot from falling back down after the ramping. Uh, so that was very, very interesting. But it was actually a lot of fun to drive the robot in this particular configuration. Having said that, the disc just wasn't what I needed it to be. I, it was getting some bites in a little bit, but it, it's a grinder disc. It wasn't actually, and it's a wide, thick grinder disc too. So it wasn't actually cutting as much as it was just kind of marking the surface, uh, which was very annoying in a lot of different ways. I think if I had the same grinder, same size grinder discs, but thinner and slightly less heavy, it would actually work a whole lot better. Would be able to cut into people better. But yeah, as they are, they're like a mil and a half thick, and that's just too thick for uh, anything other than a real sustained attempt at cutting through. So anyway, lessons learned. I think I can find grinder discs like those that I'm talking about, like thinner ones, like half a mil thick, and those should be really, really good. Outside of that, this fight was really interesting. As mentioned, he is incredibly fast. And it means that even when he's inside the scoop of the dustpan here, he is still like swinging the robot round, which is 
very, very interesting. It's a lot of fun to like get that good grapple and then realize you're not in control of this grapple, even though you're the one that has the grapple and you're the one with the saw coming down. No, no, no. He is still in control because even with one wheel touching the ground, there's enough speed there to just like shunt both robots wherever they're going to go. Um, yeah, so obviously at some point in that fight, I was like, well, I'm just getting gyroscopic procession. He's out driving me to the nth degree when this is happening. So I just turned the weapon off and was like, right, we're just going to go for the pit. We're just going to try and win this way. The weapon's not really doing that much damage anyway. Uh, we might as well see if we can improve our driving capabilities by not having the gyroscope basically destroying what we're trying to do with our driving. And thankfully, it did indeed work and we managed to get him into the pit. Next up, we have a fight against Smasher. And going to, into this fight, I was a little bit worried because uh, immediately after the strip, slipstream fight, I pulled the robot out and thrown it on charge and it was fairly low. And then it was only a couple of fights after that that I was fighting Smasher. So I was going into this one knowing that my battery was only about halfway full. <laughs> So I'd left the disc on for this fight because I had actually really enjoyed running the disc in the slipstream fight. Despite the fact that it wasn't doing all of that much, it was still fun to drive and have that gyroscopic uh, forces happening. So I was like, yeah, let's just keep that going, keep that in and running for this particular fight. And it was quite a lot of fun to do that. I also found too that with the larger weapon on, it was a lot easier to self-write against the wall. Well, the first time it was anyway. 
The second time I struggled to find the right angle that got that self writing to happen. I really do need at some point to uh, basically redesign the whole weapon stack up so that the arm can actually go further back. And all I'll do to do that is just change the gearing on these two things and then it will work. I mean, it will, I think, uh, drop the amount of torque that I have on terms of like dropping the arm into people, but uh, we'll, we'll see how we go. I think self-writing is more important at this point because if I get upended against somebody who has a weapon that can deal damage, that is a critically bad situation. So being able to self-write quickly and easily is fairly important. And at the moment, I just can't. As you know, shown by that second attempt where I failed numerous times to get the self-write in and then finally did manage to actually get it in at the end there. So running around in this fight was interesting. I did manage to cut a decent way through the actual gear that runs his hammer off basically the same servo motor that I'm running. But then the battery charge got us. So the weapon stopped and that was purely on the fact that the battery charge had dropped ridiculously low, like at the threshold of six volts, which is where a 2S battery, which is what I'm running in here, should be. And so the ESC cut out. And I didn't really know what was going on at first. I tried like chain turning the weapon on and off again a couple of different times and then finally went, oh, I'm running out of battery, especially as I realized that the drive was starting to get fairly slow as well. At that point, I went into full conservation mode. I was like, okay, I am rapidly running out of charge. We've got like 30 seconds to a minute left in this fight. As long as I play this conservatively, I can get out of this fight with a draw under my belt, which is what happened. Uh, so because I kind of slowed down, stopped moving, stopped pushing him so much, like stopped engaging in uh, pushing matches, basically doing everything I could to stay in the fight, but also remain like having battery, uh, we did manage to go all the way down to the three minute line and the fight was cold there. So the fight was indeed a draw, but Oh boy, I was on tender hooks at the end of that fight going, I'm gonna run out of battery, I'm gonna run out of battery, this is not good, this is not good, I'm gonna lose this fight by just running out of battery. Ah! <laughs> Thankfully though, uh, we did end up finishing the fight out and getting a draw for this particular fight. Next up is Chirpy, another cheese wedge. This one uh, made of 3D printed plastic, but with an aluminium front uh, armor panel attached specifically for me, I think. And also, uh, I think new and improved for this event, running acetate at the bottom of their wedge. <laughs>
So, a couple of changes had happened to Vogon Poetry in that fight. Obviously, I was running the saw and I had charged the weapon properly, or charged the whole robot properly, so that I had enough juice to get through the entirety of the fight, which was really, really good to see. The acetate that they had uh, new on Chirpy was really well done and meant that they were winning the ground game a lot of the time because the angle on their acetate was better than the angle on mine. And that made my job very, very difficult. Doubled with the fact that even with the saw on, I couldn't get through that top aluminium plate. It's only like a mil or so thick and I was only digging about half a mil into it, which wasn't great. Um, especially when part way through that match or closer to the end of that match, the actual saw arm died. The arm itself would not raise back up anymore and I was very confused as to what was going on. And it also meant that while I was still able to grab Chirpy uh, and get the saw into them, it was literally just a case of like, as I grabbed them, the saw arm kind of bounced itself up and was then just kind of like bouncing on top of them. So it wasn't really putting pressure on or doing any real damage. It was just kind of scraping the paint off the top of that aluminum sheet that they had, leading to I mean, it looks like it's damaged, but when you run your finger over, I barely got through that aluminium plate at all, um, or barely dug into that aluminium plate at all. I definitely didn't go through the thing. Uh, and then they drove really well in this fight. They kept me at bay a lot, especially up until the point where the weapon broke. And then after the weapon broke, I was more focused on what the hell was going on with my weapon uh, than I was with what they were doing. And so, yeah, I mean, we ended up in a draw in this fight because it went the full three minutes. Um, and yeah, that was a fun fight, but also, yeah, having the weapon arm go down was a problem. I then pulled the whole robot apart and found out that the reason the weapon had gone down is because the actual servo itself had broken. These things that I'm running have a fairly thin plastic case around them. And I'd had the tabs that hold the servo in place. I'd had those break before and they had broken here. And I thought, oh, that's what that is. So I fixed that, tried the weapon, was still busted, had to undo my fix to pull the servo out and have a look at it. And it turns out that the plastic casing around the gear box had split. Uh, which meant that there was no way to output force through the gears anymore. So I had to like very carefully glue all of that stuff back up and throw everything back together. And in doing so, I managed to get the arm to work for about two seconds. Uh, it raised up and it lowered back to halfway and it stopped and it got stuck. So I was going into the next fight because I was out of time. I had to go into the next fight, but I was going into this next fight with my arm locked. And that next fight up was against Brastoff, a very nasty vertical spinner. And again, my arm was locked in place. So I knew that whatever I did, I had to end this fight very quickly because otherwise it was not going to go well for me. And end that fight very quickly, I did. I basically ignored the saw. I turned it on, but I was like, well, I'm never gonna touch him because the arm's too far stuck, too far up here. Uh, so I was just like, well, I'm just gonna scoop him and wedge him. And he unfortunately had lost a little uh, wedge of his own. He has a little like point that sits down next to his weapon that in the past has been good at defeating my acetate, but he had lost it in a previous fight in the day and hadn't had a chance to replace it. So I managed to get a good scoop on him and then push him around the wall into the pit. He uh, unfortunately said afterwards that he'd lost a couple of fights in that same manner over the course of the day, which is a little bit unfortunate, um, but of course is kind of what happens when the pits are down all through the day. There was some work that happened on the pits and they should be fine for the next event, which will be Robot Havoc. Uh, but yeah, obviously they were just open for the whole day in this particular case. And so, at the end of all of that, that is the end of all of the round robin stuff. Again, uh, this time round, we didn't do a finals. We just did a points by system. And so we actually ended up first for the event, which is awesome, especially considering how much damage and stuff was taken in Vogue with, by Vogue on Poetry over this event. That first fight against Shrapnel was 
massive and I actually think that it's residual damage from that fight which ended up breaking things further down the line. So I'm really, really happy with this. Obviously, we now need to rebuild Vogon Poetry from the ground up, basically, because there's too much stuff that's happened in Vogon Poetry at this point. Uh, but I, that's, a, that's a challenge we'll get to at another time. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one, and I will see you in the next video.